Hello, beloved. The concept of shepherd and sheep is often used by the Lord in his word as a metaphor for those responsible for spiritual care and the believers they're supposed to be caring for. The trouble is, in Ezekiel's day, they weren't doing their job. In fact, they were taking advantage of the very ones they were supposed to be taking care of. So the Lord is warning them, I'm going to step in and take over as shepherd. I'm going to care for my sheep. As for you, you're going to have to answer to me. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Friday of the first week after Epiphany, January 12th, 2024. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 407 from Lutheran Service Book, To Jordan Came the Christ Our Lord. To Jordan came the Christ our Lord To do his Father's pleasure Baptized by John the Father's word Was given us to treasure This heavenly washing now shall be A cleansing from transgression and by his blood and agony release from death's oppression a new life now awaits us O oh, hear and mark the message well for god himself has spoken let faith not doubt among us dwell, and so receive this token. Our Lord here with his word and endows, pure water freely flowing. God's Holy Spirit here avows our kinship while bestowing the baptism of his blessing. These truths on Jordan's banks were shown by mighty word and wonder. The Father's voice from heaven came down, which we do well to ponder. 
This man is my beloved son, in whom my heart has pleasure. Him you must hear, and him alone, and trust in fullest measure the word that he has spoken. There stood the Son of God in love, his grace to us extending. The Holy Spirit, like a dove, upon the scene descending. The triune God assuring us with promises compelling that in our baptism he will thus among us find a dwelling to comfort and sustain us. To his disciples spoke the Lord, Go out to every nation and bring to them the living word and this my invitation let every one abandon sin and come in true contrition to be baptized and thereby win full pardon and remission and heavenly bliss inherit. But woe to those who cast aside this grace so freely given. They shall in sin and shame abide, and to despair be driven. For born in sin their works must fail, their striving saves them never. Their pious acts do not avail, and they are lost forever. Eternal death their portion. All that the mortal eye beholds is water as we pour it. Before the eye of faith unfolds the power of Jesus' merit. For here it sees the crimson flood, to all our ills bring healing. The wonders of his precious blood, the love of God revealing, assuring his own pardon. Today's reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, beginning at verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered, because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. 
Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. As for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because ye have thrust with side and shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I the Lord will be their God, and my servant David a prince among them. I the Lord have spoken it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who were baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we pray from To Live with Christ by Boo Yates. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Mark 1, verse 23. Mark is telling us this story. He interpreted for Peter and followed him on his journeys. He tells us what he heard from Peter. Peter accompanied Jesus at that time. It was at a synagogue in his hometown of Capernaum. Jesus preached with power and authority. The divine service had just ended when a sharp cry cut through the crowd of people. It was a possessed man. Now the possessed man began to cry out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Naturally, there was a great commotion. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. Then the evil spirit, shouting angrily, left him. At last, the man became himself again, speaking normally and in a calm voice. Then everyone began to ask in astonishment, What is this? He commands even evil spirits, and they obey him. This happened in the synagogue during the church service. It was Jesus' peculiar words, words with power and authority, that had this strange effect. There are other spirits that possess us, and we know they can be very evil. They know very well who their worst enemy is, the wonderful Holy One of God. They are aware of his threat. They engage in the conflict, sometimes to the point where you can hear their choleric voices a long way away. But what happens then? We pray. Lord, what happens then? You know how often we suffer defeat. The evil spirits refuse to yield. Were we too afraid, too selfish? Did we not trust in you? Did we not dare to believe? Lord, I know that you possess power and authority. Let it come to me. Let it sweep through my heart and sweep everything away that prevents you from reigning therein. Lord, Provide us with your servants today who can speak your word with power and authority, the word that really is yours, the word that makes evil shy away and makes all of us ashamed, yet at the same time happy and joyous over your intervention, the word that puts us in our place and shows us how wonderful it is that you have the kingdom and the power. Amen. We conclude again today with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. 
and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.